What's going on, LSU fans or college football fans that are going to be watching this? This is Jens 76 back here again and today. I um, want to talk to you guys about, in my opinion, the top five breakout players for the LSU Tigers. Now, these are players that are under the radar. Not a lot of people really talk about these players. They don't get a lot of national media attention. Um, and I think that these are players that I definitely think will, that definitely has the potential at least uh, to potentially have those breakout years and potentially boost their draft stocks for the future and beyond. Um, so let's we're, we're going to dive deep right into this thing, talk about some players um, that I just think that will have a huge impact for the LSU Tigers going into 2020 and could, again, potentially boost their draft stock for the future. So first player is Racy, Mc, is Racy McMath. Uh, you know, he's this kid right here, man. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know who he is, first of all, right? You know, he's a wide receiver, 6'3, 220 pounds, big receiver, can show defenders off, decent route runner. Um, but he's a guy that has some production. Now, he was the fourth receiver for LSU, um, as you know, in terms of just, you know, not in receiving yards, because obviously you got guys like Clyde and Thaddeus Smalls that had better stats. But as far as the receiving core goes, he was one of the better receivers there. And I definitely think he's one of the younger guys that now, well, now he's a veteran now. A lot, you know, he's, he's an under the radar type of guy. And, right, people will look at the LSU freshmen that are going to be coming in, or they'll look at some of the other five star players like Trey Palmer, um, that a guy that's going to immediately step in right away. But people like to really exclude guys like Reese McMath, a guy that definitely had some production last year, uh, a guy that Ed Orgeron has talked about before as, as a hard working type of guy. And, you know, again, you know, 6'3", 220 pounds, and knowing how what LSU love to do with these big-time receivers, um, he could have a breakout year. Now, he might not have the 1,000-yard type of season, but he could, but who knows? He could have that Terrence Marshall year where you could line him up on the slot. You could line him up out wide. Uh, again, you can definitely use him in red zone situations, and he's a guy that, he, you know, he's more of a possession type of receiver. Um, but I could see this kid making plays for next year. Um, again, even though LSU has a lot of talent, I definitely think as far as just productivity, they are missing as they are missing a little bit of that productivity for the receiving position. So Racy McMath, a guy that's coming that has that veteran presence, he could potentially make a big impact going into next year. Uh, Marcel Brooks, and this is random, but Marcel Brooks is my second guy here. Um, you want to talk about a guy that could be the next Isaiah Simmons. This kid right here could be the next Isaiah Simmons. You're talking about a kid that could play literally all over the place. You can play him at inside linebacker if you want, if you can. Uh, of course, they had him lined out, uh, lined up a little bit in the rotation as far as a guy that that's that extra pass rusher there. Uh, they had him at safety at times. They had him actually listed as a safety, which is actually kind of crazy. But a kid with just a ton of upside, a ton of athletic ability that can play all over the field. Right in high school, they had him play as a as a nickel. They had him play in the nickel sometimes. They had him play him out wide. I mean, they just had him playing. They just had him play playing everywhere. And in today's game, I think Isaiah Simmons has kind of transformed that position where you can literally play anywhere and you can be unstoppable. Uh, Marcel Brooks could have. You know, he definitely has the potential to become that next Isaiah Simmons. And even though he's young, uh, he's young. He was a true freshman when he played more of a rotational player. He's a guy that again. As far as a main position, they're, he's, he's not going to have that. He's a guy that he's, he's a player that they're going to just have all over the place. And, you know, a player like that, that you can play all over the place and, and just pretty much let him play free and make him and, and just let this kid make plays. He could definitely be a dangerous player um, for maybe not just next year, but for potentially years to come. And again, I think Marcel Brooks has that potential to be a first round draft pick. So Marcel Brooks is definitely, in my opinion, a, a breakout player, a, a breakout candidate uh, as terms of 2020 goes. Another guy I want to talk about, he's not, this kid, is he's not more of a breakout player. Uh, he's actually one of the more productive players for LSU's defense last year, but not a lot of people know about him. He's more of an under the radar type of guy. Um, and that's Damone Clark. Now, Damone Clark, he's going to be the he's the next man up for that linebacking position. Of course, LSU is starting to turn into linebacking university, right? These guys keep you know producing guys like Deion Jones and Devin White and Patrick Queen. These guys keep producing um, first round talents, right? Quan Alexander. I mean, the list goes on and on. But Damone Clark could be that next guy. Maybe not as athletic as Devin White and as uh, as Patrick Queen and Deion Jones. But a guy that's more, he, you know, he, he, he's more in, instinctual. Uh, he's a guy that that studies hard in the film room, um, and you can automatically tell, right? This guy, he knows how to diagnose plays, plays with a lot of uh, anger, a lot of aggression. 
um, with, you know, because he kind of lacks that athletic ability there. But he he makes up for it with just his with his instincts, with his intelligence, and just with that physical aggression that he plays with. Now he can get after the quarterback. This is a guy that had five and a half sacks. Uh, again, he's a tackling machine. Had over forty nine solo tackles. I think around the line. Looking at his stats here. Yeah, you know, the kid had around around 62 tackles. So he's a tackling machine. Again, a, a more under-the-radar type of player, but a guy that can definitely make noise, and, and he's going he's gonna to step up. He is going to be one of the leaders of the defense. I think for him is that can he make noise and get that national recognition, get that national attention? That's something that we're going to have to find out about. But Damone Clark, a lot of LSU fans already know him. He's one of the best players on the defense. But a player, in my opinion, that could potentially get that national recognition for next year, uh, especially for the draft. Another player that was more, he was injured last year, but a player that was more impactful the year before, uh, that was Todd Harris Jr. Now, looking at Todd Harris Jr., again, he made a lot of plays last year as a, uh, as a, as a redshirt sophomore, I believe. I could be wrong about that, either redshirt freshman or redshirt sophomore. But he made a lot of plays in 2018. Um, of course, had that famous interception against Tua Tonga Valoa. Um, right, has some pass deflections here. Was more of a was a guy that can was more of a rangy type of player. A guy that that was pretty good in open space tackles. Um, but Todd Harris Jr., you know, he, he looked like he was having a promising year. Had a great training, had a great spring, great training camp, um, and then was just unlucky. Right, had that had that had that foot injury, or I forgot what injury it was, but he had the injury which ended the season and. You know, Jacoby Stevens had to step up and take his spot. So um, this is a guy that, again, as far as, you know, vet, as far as that veteran leadership presence, a guy that has a lot of experience. I think Todd Harris Jr. definitely offers that to that team. And even though they're losing Grant Delput, Jacoby Stevens is there as that as that hard hitter there, that hard hitter in the box type of safety. Todd Harris is more of that playmaking type of safety that is that's a little bit more rangy. And again, I think that this is good as far as just experience. Because Derek Stingley, obviously the best cornerback in the nation. They needed a number two guy to play alongside him. We, that's still questionable. But still, I think losing, you know, not having a, a safety that can replace the productivity that Grant Delpit has had, uh, Todd, you know, that would be a big loss. So Todd Harris has that potential to potentially fill in that void for Grant Delpit. Again, I don't think he's as good as Grant Delpit, but a guy that has a lot of promise and could potentially be a breakout player for next year. So Todd Harris Jr. is also a player, in my opinion, that could definitely get that national recognition. Terrence Marshall, um, he was he was the number three receiver. Again, a guy that you can line him up in the slot. You can line him up about wide, 6'4", 200 pounds, more of a possession type of receiver, but a guy that is one of his really his only flaw was really his hands. I, you know, I mean, Terrence Marshall could have had a lot more receiving yards, a lot more touchdowns. Uh, if it wasn't for the drops, man, I mean, he he had some he had some pretty big drops going into 20 during the 2019 season. And. If you also take it the fact that he was also hurt for, I think he missed, I think like around three or four games, uh, you know, again, even though I think a lot less targets would have went towards guys like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and a lot of the, a lot more of those targets would have went towards Terrence Marshall. Cause again, the beginning of the season, man, this dude had a hot streak. Um, again, he was a great possession receiver. You can, again, he was great in the red zone, a guy that you can, again, throw any type of deep route patterns. He's a guy that can definitely perform. May might not be as elite as a route runner as Justin Jefferson. Might not be as, you know, an aggressive type of catcher. A guy that is just simply just gonna body you um when it comes to those 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 deep ball possessions like Jamar Chase, but a guy that is really his only flaw is just consistency with his hands, right? Besides that, just doesn't really have that much of a weakness. Kind of the same as Justin Jefferson. So despite the injuries and despite the drop balls, I mean, Terrence Marshall was a guy that had over almost 700, I think he had around 700 yards of re receiving, had over 40 catches, had over a, had over 10 touchdowns. So that just tells you how, how effective he is in the red zone, how effective is he as a guy that can definitely make the big plays happen. Um, Terrence Marshall is going to be the number two guy right beside Jamar Chase. And, you know, you look at the offense that S. Minger is running things because of Joe Brady. And if Miles Brennan can live up to the potential, Terrence Marshall could be the next big time receiver there at LSU. So Terrence Marshall is he could potentially look to have a breakout year going into 2020. And, you know, last but not least is, you know, it is the guy. It is um, Miles Brennan. Uh, Miles Brennan is the guy for me. Um, he he has to have a breakout season because I don't see anybody else. Right. If, if JT Downs would have transferred there or, if, you know, some other big time quarterbacks, you know, I think LSU would have been looking. They would have they would have been man. LSU would have been set if they just would have had a big-time quarterback transfer to their program.
But Miles Brennan's a guy that knows the offense, right? He's been there for the last uh, two to three years. Um, he's sat behind Joe Burrow for the last two years. He, you know, he knows Steve Steve uh, Insminger. He knows the players there. Um, he's learned a lot under the Joe Brady system there. So he's a guy that's next man up, and he has a lot of weapons around him. Um, they do take some big losses on the offensive line. They do take some losses um, at some of the other skill positions, but the talent is obviously going to be there. And I think that the this, the modern day LSU offense that's going to run a lot of spread, that's going to throw the football a lot. Um, Miles Brennan's a guy that's going to have to, he has no choice but to be a breakout player for them now. Is he going to throw for almost 6,000 yards and 60 touchdowns? No. Um, but could he potentially be an effective quarterback that could be, that could get LSU to be in a championship contender? Absolutely. Because again, the talent is there. The offense has now caught up to the modern day and we saw what happens when they actually can do it. They, they become one of the more dominant programs because of the talent level that they have there. So Miles Brennan has everything there. The coaches believe in him. Ed Orgeron named him the starter and named, is confident that he's going to be the starter. And obviously the players got his back there. Um, so Miles Brennan is uh, my last candidate to potentially be in a breakout player for 2020. So LSU fans, let me know below the comic session. Um, who do you get? You know, what players do you think are to break out? Again, I didn't include any freshmen here, but you guys can. But again, you guys could, right? Guys like Eric Gilbert, John Emery, um, right? Davis Price. So let me know who you guys, you know, breakout players are, and we can definitely hash that out in the comic session below. So anyway, guys, Jan 716. I'll catch you guys later. Stay safe. And I can't believe I'm even saying this, but for all of you LSU fans out there, I'm only going to do this once. No, I'm not doing it. Uh, you know, I'll do it. Go Tigers.